This is your Barbados Today evening news update for Monday, November 1. Outspoken Government Minister Carrie Simmons today made clear that public access to beaches in Barbados remains a top priority. And he serves notice he won't be tolerating any move to block access, particularly to West Coast beaches. Simmons, the Member of Parliament for St. James Central, made this statement today amid concern that a development at Fitz Village St. James appears to be blocking one of the last remaining windows to the beach. I was heartened yesterday to read in the paper that the chief power planner has issued a notice to the public indicating that they are going to ensure that the developer complies with regulations. And I hear that. And I will go no further at this point because the chief power planner has spoken to the public. And only the chief power planner and the chief power planner alone in Barbados can deal with these matters. But let me make Kerry Simmons' position abundantly clear. If the access to the beaches of this West Coast are not treated as a first priority on the behalf of those people who live in this West Coast, then they're going to have a noise with me. And I don't care which government it is, it's going to have a noise with me. He was speaking at the opening of the Paynes Bay Fish Market this morning. Simmons, who is Minister of Small Business, Energy and Entrepreneurship, insisted that while investors are more than welcome, they must not violate the law. So if we have a developer who has decided that he's going to block access to the beach, then the developer must be brought to heel. I have been a Minister of Tourism in this country. I have said as Minister of Tourism, when they shut down Chin Chin and did not want to pay the workers, the black Barbadian workers, pay them their just due, I went to Chin Chin and spoke to the representatives and told them, treat the people of Barbados with dignity and with decency. We will always welcome foreign investment. The country needs the foreign investment, God knows. We need the employment that comes with it. But the passport from overseas does not entitle you to do as you please, do what the hell you care to do in this land of our birth. And that has to be made abundantly clear. Meanwhile, the fisher folk at Payne's Bay welcomed the improved fish market. Minister of Maritime Affairs and Blue Economy Kurt Humphrey highlighted several changes he says will benefit the workers who deserve to ply their trade with dignity. We've used a material that allows us to meet international phytosanitary standards, which is a commercial quartz. We've renovated the bathrooms. We've added a bathroom for the fishermen over there. We've also made sure that there is wheelchair access here because all the markets must be disabled friendly because Barbados must become a much more friendly place to persons with disabilities as well. And the area on which you stand or sit, some of you, it's paved to, be allowed, to allow people to, to gather here, but more primarily for the fishermen to be able to haul out their vessels. And so we've taken that approach from, we've started in the east, we're now working at Concept Bay, we're coming all the way around, we've done Oystens, Bridgetown, we've done Powell Bay, through the port, thank you Mr. John Marie. We've done work in, about to do work at Western Market again through the port, Western is going to have a comprehensive overview. We expect that to cost us nearly $2 million when we do the full renovation at Western. In other news this Monday, warning that the climate crisis is a death sentence for Barbados and other small island developing states, Prime Minister Mia Motley again cautioned her world counterparts that nothing less than urgent action must be the outcome of COP26. Addressing the Climate Change Conference in Glasgow, Scotland, she said the biggest fear of nations on the front line of global warming is that the gathering will not achieve its goals. She urged leaders to lead. How many more voices and how many more pictures of people must we see on these screens without being able to move? Or are we so blinded and hardened that we can no longer appreciate the cries of humanity? I have been saying to Barbadians for many years that many hands make light work. Today, we need the correct mix of voices, ambition, and action. Do some leaders in this world believe that they can survive and thrive on their own? Have they not learned from the pandemic? Can there be peace and prosperity 
if one third of the world literally prospers and the other two thirds of the world live under siege and face calamitous threats to our well-being? What the world needs now, my friends, is that which is within the ambit of less than 200 persons who are willing and prepared to lead. Leaders must not fail those who elect them to lead. Motley described the current financial models for small island development states as immoral and unjust. She pointed out that climate finance the SIDS declined by 25% in 2019 and proposed a substantial increase in the special drawing rights to even the scales. There is a sword that can cut down this Gordian knot and it has been wielded before. The central banks of the wealthiest countries engaged in $25 trillion of quantitative easing in the last 13 years. 25 trillion of that, 9 trillion was in the last 18 months to fight the pandemic. Had we used that 25 trillion to purchase bonds, to finance the energy transition, or the transition of how we eat, or how we move ourselves in transport, we would now today be reaching that 1.5 degrees limit that is so vital to us. I say to you today in Glasgow that an annual increase in the SDRs of $500 billion a year for 20 years put in a trust to finance the transition is the real gap, Secretary General, that we need to close, not the $50 billion being proposed for adaptation. And if $500 billion sounds big to you, guess what? It is just 2% of the 25 trillion. This is the sword we need to wield. Back home in Barbados, the visiting Lion Club's district governor, sub-district 60B, Claudia Bunkamper, today joined the national effort to plant 1 million trees with the planting of a soursop tree at the National Botanical Gardens on Monday. He said protecting the environment is a priority for the Lions Club. As you know, the environment is a very important aspect and around the world right now, actually the G20 are meeting, discussing the environment, which as we know, protecting our environment is a must. And as Lions, it's one of our core areas and I'm very pleased and proud to be here today with my fellow Lions and Leos of Barbados in helping and doing our part in the society of Barbados by planting a sour sap tree at the Botanical Gardens. There's regional and international news after this short break. I'll admit, when the COVID-19 vaccines were first introduced, I was a bit skeptical. I wondered, how did they create these vaccines so quickly? I heard so many theories and was suffocated by all the noise. But once I did my own research and began speaking to my friends in the field, I got the facts and decided to take the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. I am now proud to say that I'm fully vaccinated. I am one who believes in choice, but I also know that with each choice comes consequences. COVID-19 vaccines have been proven to provide a layer of protection against COVID-19. We have been in this situation for far too long now. It is time to get our lives back. We still need to social distance, wash our hands and mask up, but having an extra layer of protection with the COVID-19 vaccines, we should feel more happy that we're protecting ourselves, our family and friends, our colleagues, and our clients. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news, the Jamaica Police Federation and the Jamaica Teachers Association are not on board with the government's offer for a 4% wage increase, which has been accepted by the Jamaica Confederation of Trade Unions. Ocean Masters of Television Jamaica has the story. The Police Federation, which represents rank-and-file members in September, rejected the government's 4% wage offer. Chairman of the Federation, Corporal Rowan James, says he will not be daunted by the other associations signing the government's offer. However, he's calling for some clarity from Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark. The Minister of Finance is speaking about jeopardizing, but he has not told the nation that he has not come clean. He who expects to rely on equity must do so with clean hands. And up to this point in time, the Minister of Finance has not disclosed to the 
this federation, what it is that the actual 9% of GDP that he, uh, that the legislation speaks to, that he's working with, he has not disclosed the implication of what it is that the compensation review will mean. For JNTA President Winston Smith, the announcement by Dr. Clark that if agreements were not signed this year, the implementation of the compensation review next year would be in jeopardy was premature. I don't understand why the minister would put forward a position like that out there because remember the financial year ends all the way on next year, um, April. March. And if the minister is so concerned about the jeopardizing of the negotiation going forward, then the minister just needs to come in and give us a decent result and increase our reset plan it and move on. On the international front, the global death toll from COVID-19 topped 5 million on Monday, less than two years into a crisis that has not only devastated poor countries, but also humbled wealthy ones. Together, the United States, the European Union, Britain and Brazil account for one-eighth of the world's population, but nearly half of all reported deaths. The U.S. alone has recorded more than 740,000 deaths, more than any other nation. Globally, COVID-19 is now the third leading cause of death after heart disease and stroke. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.